And now, Luke is going to go down the list of all the different nationalities that are there. Mm -hmm. And how, here we, every man in our own tongue, when we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and, and, and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus in Asia, Pergia and Pamphylia in Egypt, uh, 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 Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak yes. in our yeah. tongue. The wonderful works of God. of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Mm. So some people are saying, Wait a minute, what was going on? Uh -huh. We, we want to know what this means. But others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice. And said unto them, ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose. Sing is but the third hour of the day. But this is that hey. which was spoken Hallelujah. by the prophet Joel. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit Amen. upon all flesh. Jesus. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Amen. Wait a minute. Uh -uh. Minister Blair, how is this the prophetic utterance of Joel when Joel, Joel, when uh -huh. Joel said they were going to prophesy, but they're speaking in tongues? Uh -huh. <laughs> that would seem like a contradiction. The initial evidence of the Holy Ghost is speaking in tongues, but Joel said when, when, when he poured the Spirit out, they were going to prophesy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, little did you know that when they were speaking in tongues, they were prophesying. Amen. 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 And here's how. When the Galileans that were in the upper room began to speak in these other languages, and they were speaking in an unknown tongue, a tongue that they did not know, to the person that was hearing it, they understood clearly That's what right. was being said. Amen. So if Peter was walking around saying, the Lord is soon to come repent, uh -huh, uh -huh. they heard what he was saying. So the tongue now has turned into prophecy. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. They were able to understand Thank you, Jesus. what was being said. Amen. So tongues, even those unknown to the person speaking, uh -huh. to the one that hears it, they hear the message that the Spirit is conveying. Amen. Because Paul is going to let us know in the book of Corinthians that when you speak in an unknown tongue, it is the Spirit that is praying. And you're speaking mysteries in the Spirit. And so even though it's an unknown tongue to me, when the person who understands the language hear it, they hear clearly what God is speaking through me. Amen. So if I'm speaking in an unknown tongue, but God is speaking through me saying that an earthquake is about to hit children, an earthquake is about to hit children, they hear it clearly and it now becomes Jesus. prophecy. Jesus, Amen. Jesus, Jesus. Y'all see how this works? Yes, Amen. yes. So Joel is right on. Jesus. He's right on. I'm going to pour my spirit and they're going to prophesy. Mm -hmm. Even though the people were speaking in tongues, it became prophecy because those that were able to understand heard clearly That's right. what was being said. All right? So he said upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Amen. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs and the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourself also know. Him being delivered up by the determinate counsel and the foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God had raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. But David speaking concerning him, I foresaw the 
fall always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because I will not leave my soul in hell, neither will I suffer the Holy One to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, mm. and his sepulcher is with us until this day. Now, behold, I always for so long, for he is at my right hand. Now, Peter is going to make something known here. And this is what Peter reveals here. He said, listen, y'all, verse number 27, but thou will not, will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer the whole one to see corruption. He said, but listen, men and brother, let me speak to you about David. David is both dead and buried, and his tomb is still here with us to this day. So in other words, when people die, they do not go to heaven. Amen. That's proof right there. And they do not go to the lake of fire. Amen. Amen. People get, getting up talking about something, something went to heaven. And, and, yeah. and they in heaven right now singing in that heavenly choir. And they in heaven right now they talking with the angels. The Bible does not teach that nowhere. Amen. Amen. The Bible simply says when human beings die, whether righteous or unrighteous, righteous, the Bible says the breath or the life of that individual goes back to God who gave it. That's what it said. Amen. Saint or sinner. That's right. The spirit goes back. Because God is the source of life. Mm -hmm. So our life goes back to the source of life, which is God. So our spirits go back to God. Who gave it? Amen. But that does not mean that when our spirits go back to God who gave it, you sit down there marching around the throne. Amen. 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 And start singing, you can't cry until I get there. Ain't nobody gonna cry. Them. That's right. Amen. Because ain't nobody up there right. in the throne of heaven talking to God because there must be a resurrection. That's right. Amen. There's an order to this thing. That's right. Here's my dilemma with people that teach. That when people die, they automatically go to heaven. If they already go to heaven, then what is the need for a resurrection? That's right. Amen. Amen. If we all go to our separate destinations upon death, then there is no need for a resurrection. Right. I'm already in heaven. Why you won't take me out of heaven, bring me back down here, resurrect my body, just to take me back to heaven again? Right. Amen. Amen. It, it don't make no sense. So Peter reveals that David is both dead Because it got to be a resurrection. Amen. A resurrection from the dead. Listen to this. Therefore being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He's seen this before speak of the resurrection of Christ. That his soul was not left in hell. Now this also reveals our theory concerning hell. Amen. You don't live right, you going to hell. Even if I am living right, I'm still going to hell. Uh -huh. Hell here is the grave. Amen. Jesus wasn't no sinner, so surely Jesus wasn't going to hell. Amen. He knew no sin. Amen. But yet the Bible said his soul was not left in hell. Yeah, that's right. The grave. Eternal judgment, according to the scriptures, is called the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Second death. The second death. Amen. The wrath of God. Yes. This is what we are preparing ourselves to avoid. Amen. The wrath of God. Amen. The Bible said we've been saved Amen. from the wrath of God. Amen. What people really don't understand Amen. is that you're not saving yourself from uh, uh, this this mystery place right. that that you're, you're that you're going to, you're saving yourself from the wrath of God that's going to be poured out upon the world, which right. we call the lake of fire, which we call hell. Amen. 
The word hell here has two meanings. Yes, amen. Because you're going to show, we're going to show you the book of Revelations where death and hell yes. got to give up the dead. Amen. <laughs> That's right. That's they have right. to give up the dead. Amen. And then those that they give up, if they're not righteous, they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Amen. They're going to resurrect out of these places, give up the dead, and then they're going to be judged. Death and hell give up the dead. And then death and hell are going to be thrown into the lake of fire. <laughs> the lake of fire. Amen. Even death and hell got to have an input to them. That's right. That's right. According to the word of God. Amen. All right. Amen. Boy, I tell you, when I started teaching that boy, they said it, it, it was on my back. Oh, and at the time, it ain't no hell. He's a heretic. <laughs> I've been causing trouble since the, for the three years I've been here. Yes, wow. yes. All Thank right. you, Jesus. I started preaching that boy. They thought they did something wrong with him. He'd have gone crazy. Preach it in. I, I'm not nowhere pushing out eternal judgment, but I'm pushing out. You got to make sure you understand what the Word of God is saying. Amen. And put it in his right and proper perspective. Amen. Death and hell got to give up the dead. Amen. Death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. They got to be destroyed. So that lets you know that those things are not your final destination. Amen. There is a second death. That's right. And that's what we try to save ourselves from. Right. That second death. Yes. Thank you, Lord. All right? All right. So see, this will force people the resurrection of Christ, that his soul not nothing in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Remember, Jesus died, but he was rose on the third day. Right. Normally, decay and stuff does not sit in until the fourth day. Remember with Lazarus, Lazarus was dead four days. His sister said, Lord, by this time he's stinking. Right. Mm -hmm. Because normally on the fourth day, corruption begins to sit in. Right. Decay starts coming. So God, who is it was infinite in wisdom, he knew that he had to raise the body of Jesus Christ from the dead on the third day, right before corruption set in. Right. Right. That's Amen. why the third day resurrection was so important. Amen. So the eternal spirit went to the grave and snatched that body out of the grave and snatched it from the clutches of death right before it was able to corrupt the body in order to fulfill the prophecy that he made to David. I will leave his soul in hell, neither will his flesh see corruption. Uh -huh. The Amen. body of Jesus didn't even decay in the grave. No, sir. Because God went and got the body out before it could even begin to corrupt. Amen. So the third day resurrection is, was, is greatly important as, 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 as it is for us as believers in Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. Because it was prophetic. That's right. All right? It was his fulfillment to David. 32. Then see, th this Jesus have God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear. Jesus poured out the Holy Ghost That's right. upon the people on the day of Pentecost. You're seeing this and you're hearing this. Yeah. All right, verse number 34 is going to back up what I just made mention about David. For David is not ascended into the heavens. Then you know. Amen. Then you know. Amen. See, as long as you say in the word of God, you can never be condemned. That's, That's right. right. David is not ascended into heaven, into the heavens. But he said himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thy, thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly. Mm -hmm. All right, so we get further clarity that David is both dead and buried. His sepulcher is here, and David has not yet ascended into the heavens. That's right. Quite David's body is still in the grave awaiting the resurrection from the dead. His spirit went back to the source of all life, which is God who gave it. Amen. But he's still awaiting the resurrection. Amen. So there is nobody in heaven dancing around the throne, Amen. shouting and singing and in the heavenly choir. Stop telling that lie. Amen. It is a lie. And preachers get up at people's funeral telling that lie. Oh, I can see him singing in the choir. You liar. Amen. Amen. Did I sing in no choir? The angels are sitting into the heaven. He did. Right. The Bible says the dead know of nothing. That's right. You can't repent. There's no, there ain't nothing in the grave. You can't do nothing when you're in the grave. You dead until the resurrection. That's right. So I'm telling that lie. Oh, oh, she was a great cook, and I know she up there cooking Jesus biscuits. Yeah. Jesus probably don't eat no biscuits. He don't need no biscuits. Right. And your mother ain't up there. <laughs> Stop telling this lie. 
Amen. And, and, and let's just be honest. We only say this type of stuff for comfort. Yes. Right? yes. But, but, but you can't tell no lie to comfort nobody. No. Right. Tell the truth. They're in the grave, awaiting the resurrection, and I pray that their soul is right with God in order that they might see him when he comes. If not, they're going to be cast out of his presence. That's, right. That's the reality. You got to lie and tell them in heaven to tell them in the grave day, awaiting the resurrection. And I don't know what life they live, and I don't know if they went to heaven or hell. All I can do is pray that, that when the Lord comes, their soul is right so they can see Jesus in peace. Yeah. Preach the truth to the people. Amen. Amen. Oh, Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin in the grave. She did. She died yeah. with James Brown and, and Joe Laverne and the rest of them died as winning well the resurrection. Stop lying. Amen. They're not in heaven. She died with Michael Jackson. All that bones in there waiting for the resurrection. And we pray that heart and soul was right with God that when the body reconnects with their spirit, they can be caught up with the Lord. If not, they will go to lick a fire. Stop lying to the people. She in heaven. She's not in heaven. Her body right there. <laughs> Amen. Only her life went back to God. That body got the decay, corrupt, go back to the earth. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, earth to earth. It got to go back to the dust. And then the power of God is going to awaken that body up out of the dust. Amen. And yeah. that thing that was corruptible is going to put on in corruption. That's right. Amen. Stop lying to these people. That's why page was study the word of God. Right? Amen. So David has not ascended into the heaven. David ain't there yet. But he said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit down on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let the house of Israel Mm. Know assuredly that God Have made that same Jesus Whom you have crucified Both Lord and Christ All this type of stuff is important to understand Why Peter is going to say what he said In verse number 38 mm. Amen He's talking to the Jews Who were the betrayers And the murderers Of Jesus Amen. These men by wicked hand Slain and crucified The just one but so now Peter is preaching under the anointing of the Holy Ghost to the men that crucified the Messiah. And he said that the house of Israel knows surely that God had made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both the Lord and Christ. And when they heard this, mm. they were pricked up to their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They just realized that they were the murderers of the Prince of Peace. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Oh my God! Oh, we killed him, Jesus. but God raised him up. Jesus. What are we gonna do? She was scared, uh -huh. and you know they probably were scared for multiple reasons. One of the main reasons why they probably were scared was because we killed him, and he done came back to life. Oh my God! He'll kill us. Amen. Amen. He gonna get revenge on them. He'll kill us. So they like, oh my God! What are we gonna do with that man that we done killed? And then came That's back to life. Right. He gonna get us. That's for sure. But see, they didn't know that Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy me, so I came to save you. Save them, yes. So even to them that had crucified the Lord, he was going to forgive them, and he was going to save them. In fact, he had already forgiven them while he was on the on cross. The he said, God, right. forgive them, for they know not what, what they, they do. do. He had already forgiven them of their sin. That's right. Amen. 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 Even before they had ever repented. Amen. Amen. Jesus had already forgiven them. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Die. He forgiven them, shed his blood to wash away the sin. Now, Peter got to tell them, now what y'all got to do, you got to repent. Repent means have a change of heart. Change your mind about him. Mm -hmm. You thought that he was a, a wicked person. You thought that he was some uh, 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 man that was coming to change the laws of Moses. You thought that he was just somebody that was worthy of them. Change your mind. Uh -huh. That's what repentance means To have a change of heart Have a change of mind Have a change of attitude A change of perspective That's what Paul said Be transformed by the renewing of your mind Have a change of mind Concerning him Now Jews Are Religious people Jews are keepers of the law of Moses. Jews believe in abstaining from things strangled and blood. They believe in abstaining from certain meats and, 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 and certain 
certain animals. These people are living clean, moral lives. But they have betrayed the Messiah. Mm. So the sin that Peter is telling them to repent of was murdering the law. Amen. Because his shoes are morally clean people. Mm. Circumcised the eighth day, keeping the laws of Moses, doing what is right in their law. So they think. Mm. So now Peter got to tell them, y'all have a change of heart, have a change of mind toward this man. And then be baptized in his name for the remission, for the forgiveness, for the removal of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. And Peter is going to keep telling them, for the promise in verse 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. Now Jews, if y'all want to undo the wrong that you did by killing him, have a change of heart toward him. Mm -hmm. And then be baptized in his name and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But hey, this promise is just not to you. It's also to your children. Mm. Because you Jews, you're used to, to taking your eight-day-old male child and circumcising them and putting them under the covenant of God. But now since we're going to bring you under a new covenant, we're going to include you, but we're also going to include yes, your children yes, in yes. this promise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's talking to Jews. Uh -huh. Gentiles have not come in yet. Jews, people that believe in circumcising Amen. And he tells them this promises to you and to your children. To as many as I fall, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Yes, Lord. It includes all of you. Now listen to this. And after he tells them this, the Bible says, and with many other words did he exhort them. Uh, uh, and with many other words he did testify and exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received this word were baptized, and the same day they were about, they were added unto them about three thousand souls. Mm. Souls, mm. men, women, children. That's right, amen. Amen. Men, amen. Women, and children. Amen. amen. Because Jews would not have been baptized in the morning name of Jesus Christ, but they let their children sit on the sideline and say, "You can't partake in what we're doing." Jews didn't operate that way. That's why Peter knew, being a Jew, knew he had to include the children in his promises to you and your children. Amen. And he just said to you, mm -hmm. and he just said to you, children would have been excluded. But Peter was wise enough to know, mother first, not to exclude the children sure. because Jesus had rebuked them when he was walking the earth. Uh -huh. And children yeah, were brought yeah. to him. Yeah. And they rebuked them. Man. So now Peter got some wisdom now. He ain't going to include the children after Jesus had already rebuked his table. Amen. Before. That's right. He took the correct. That's right. He Jesus learned. Jesus already rebuked, rebuked uh, for, for forbidden children. Amen. So Peter made sure the problem is up to you. Oh, and your children. Because <laughs> Jesus ain't going to give me the second time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he ain't going to give me the second time. For forbidden them. I'm not forbidding them from this plan. And he includes them. In the plan of salvation, if we humble ourselves and, and take the record of the word of God, we will not have an issue with our children being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And we will continue to save our children regardless of who don't agree. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, so what if some don't believe? That's right. Does it make the faith of God a little effect? God, God forbid. forbid. Let God be true and let every man be alive. Amen. Amen. The reality is that people are saying that, oh, this teaching about the children is worthless and it's not expedient. But let me let y'all know something. Not to pray, but I've been getting more emails and more phone calls concerning this. Or more and more people saying we want to baptize our yeah. children. Thank you, Lord. Hey. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank
doctrine is so important. Uh -huh. Now, I can understand people saying, we don't want to baptize infants and whatever, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Okay, whatever. This brother revealed to me today on the phone that there are churches in Maryland that refuse and forbid children, period. Wow. Mm. Until the age of 12. Wow. Meaning even if an eight or nine year old stands up and says they want to be baptized, they still won't baptize them. Because they feel like they don't understand or they don't know until they get to 12. They will refuse them. When I heard that man, I said, Lord, have mercy. It broke my heart. I said, Lord, what is wrong with people? Even to ones that will stand up and say, I want to go down the water in Jesus' name. They still will refuse them. Right. Hallelujah. Man. They still refuse them. And don't tell me these children don't understand. Lady and Lyra was in the bathroom with the mayor the other night. And the girls wanted to play and wanted to baptize the men. Men, come on, let me baptize you. Men said, no. <laughs> yeah. I already been baptized. Yeah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We didn't tell them that. Uh -huh. We did not, we did not give them the words to reply back to them. Hey, said, man. No. Thank you, Lord. I already been baptized. Hey, said, man. man. Thank you, Lord. I said, man. I said, how are you better in Jesus' name? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, not only do we, do we baptize them, but we teach them. Yes. And so I have men stand on the bed, and, and this is what I do with my son. And Peter said unto them, Two feet water. I don't let them know water. Come on. And Peter said unto them, Shame. I know you're scared. Uh -huh. You know. So we said, Peter said unto them, and I quote the scripture. Oh, you scared, what are you scared for? Because <laughs> oh, soon as we finish preaching, you can get on the microphone and tell them what they got to do. Uh -huh. So he said, yeah. Peter. So I, I, I trained him. I said, Peter said unto them, repent. And he repeats after me. Uh -huh. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And before I can even get the second part out, and you shall be filled with uh, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. He's finishing us. He's finishing the sentence. Thank you, Jesus. So we're training them, and we're putting it in them. We're instilling it in them. When we land in the house and we're walking out the way, we're teaching them, instructing them, telling them the ways of God. Amen. Amen. And now they're reciting it. They're memorizing it. So now he knows. At one. So we're now. He's finishing the sentence. Amen. 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 He's finishing the sentence. And he ain't all that scared. All they want to see was look at the pool some some water. Uh -huh. <laughs> but he finishes the sentence now. Yes. And now we listen to Laura at the house and he's quoting the scripture. Right. Mm. On his own, walking around the house. And out of nowhere, he was going it. This boy went in there, plugged up. The kids carry over the machine. Plug it into the wall, turn it on, grab the microphone, and start preaching. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Telling people what they got to do. Right. We come in the bathroom. He done took my body wash. Uh -huh. In the bathroom with the body wash. <laughs> I baptized you. <laughs> and the name of Jesus, boom! Dunk in the body wash. Amen. <laughs> Train him that up. That's a person. Uh huh. Chris said, go get a baby doll or something. Give him something that we think is a human being. And then I'm baptized. I said, no, leave him alone. He comes up with the body wash. Uh huh. Dunk in that body wash. Amen. In the water, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Pray it over. Look, look, in the name of Jesus. Help this little boy. They are baptized you in the name of Jesus. And you should reach him. Hold on. Boom. Dunk in the water. Oh, oh, God bless him. Bless the Lord. Lord Jesus. All I'm going to talk about is water now. Water, 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 water,